Now, I'm really curious about this. What does being pure in heart mean to you? You are already made in a special way, with a special purpose by God. Welcome to the right side up, uh, the beatitude of blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. Our two guests today are Edgar and Victor. Edgar Sandoval, he is the U.S. Uh, World Vision president, so he uh, oversees so much incredible good work. He himself has overcome so much disability and is such an empowering and advocate for uh, disempowered youth all around the world. So we are so honored to have Edgar, and he's asking questions to Victor. Victor lives in an Indian uh, a World Vision project where uh, kids with disabilities, physical disabilities, and he has had a lot. He's had to live there since he was seven years old and learn not only how to deal with things physically, but also spiritually and emotionally and in his own uh, context of being a disempowered youth who now has become an incredible advocate for children with disabilities uh, in India. Victor is winsome and incredible and filled with wisdom. You can see the purity of his heart. And the, 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 the wisdom that he shares, we're going to debrief on afterwards, but man, it's going to leave you speechless. And I hope lead you right into the centrality of this kingdom of Jesus himself. Blessed are the pure in heart. Uh, tune into this. It's going to matter. Hi, I'm Edgar Sandoval, president and CEO of World Vision US. But I'm also the dad of four children, including two beautiful daughters with special needs. As a Christ-centered, child-focused organization, we believe God created all children to impact the world for good. So we empower kids to make choices and take hold of their future, becoming change makers in their communities and families. Children are hopeful, resilient, and pure in heart. Now, I'm really curious about this. What does being pure in heart mean to you? It is really, really important for a person to have a pure heart because having, having a pure heart gives you true peace. Now, a pure heart means having an innocent heart a heart that is full of love and compassion, a heart that, that has no hatred for others, or in other words, a heart that, that is like a snow, full white no other color mixed with it. I would love to hear what is one hope you have for your future. I discover that people are forced, especially young, the young people, the youth, are forced to do the things or take up a profession just because the society thinks it is right to do so. And when that happens, lots of youngsters enter into darkness and they ruined ruins and they ruin their life they destroy their life and they fall into depression and the ultimate 
unsolvable damage. is uh, suicide so I have one big dream for my future that is to become a leader I don't know about great or small but to become a leader that can inspire millions of people and motivate them to follow their hearts to live their life with a peaceful mind because in a world of today our minds are are occupied more by the thoughts of the society than our, our own thoughts. Could you share with us how do you see God even in the midst of hardship? I see God as my protector, my, my refuge, my comforter. Because when you do that, no matter what comes in your way, you know that something good is waiting there for you because your God, your Creator has planned everything for you. Does everyone treat you with love and respect? I grew up in a Christian family, uh, so many I, uh, I spent a uh, time with a lot of Christians uh, and non-Christian stems well, but most of the people would would not treat me with love and respect. They uh, now I would wonder how do I know that? I know that because they are pretending they are pretending to be nice and warm with me. But from the outside from, but from the inside They have different uh, thoughts, opinions about me, which is which are bad or disappointing. How do you deal with and overcome adversity? I was born in the year 1993 in Silchar Assam. 
with a locomotor disability and therefore at the age of seven I joined uh, Shishu Sarothi, a center for rehabilitation and training for multiple disability and there I not only had my primary education but also learned to shop, shop my skills, develop my pers personality and learn how to deal and overcome challenges of life. While I was there in the institute, I discovered that it is important to, to be happy with what you are. You don't have to do something extraordinary or something special to become special because you are already made in a special way with a special purpose by God. And as soon as I discover that I had peace in my heart. How do you keep your motives pure? People would make us feel as we as if we are different from them. without realizing that they are not abusing or insulting me, but they are insulting and abusing the creation of God. And honestly, When that happens, it is difficult to digest and give, keep my motive pure. The only way I could keep my, or I'm able to keep my motive pure it's all, all because of God. It is all because I trust Him with my heart, my soul, my mind. I would like to sing a song for you all. I hope you enjoy it. God bless you all. Thank you so much. So the song that I'm going to sing for you is In the Morning When I Rise, Give Me Jesus by Fernando Ortega. Give me 
Okay, now I took a bunch of notes on the interview uh, between Edgar and Victor, but before I even go into the notes, can we just take a minute, just like maybe a minute is even a little longer than we have, but just take a moment to just let that, you can have the whole world, but give me Jesus song by Victor was just like, un, it undid me, just it undid me in so many ways. It just, it is so, as a matter of fact, um, you know, in many of the conversations we've had about this specific podcast, like I actually feel like we should have maybe just left it alone after that song, or maybe we'll play that song again, or maybe we'll just make him singing that song on its own clip so that we can just hear it one more time. If you have a chance, I know you're listening to this, many of you on audio, but if you have a chance to check out the YouTube to watch Victor uh, with his physical disabilities, sing anyway and play anyway and like rise into that moment of i mean oh wow it is so powerful blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god this is a conversation that they're having um and i loved victor talking about an innocent heart this is how he puts it a heart that is full of love and compassion and a heart that has no hatred for others whoa in other words he says a heart that is like snow all white with no other color mixed in it, you know, just describing. And I actually was, when uh, Victor used that imagery, I was, 
I'm a Canadian, so I'm familiar with snow. And there is, you know, something so profoundly beautiful about when everything's covered, the first time it snows and you wake up and everything's white. But I live in the city, and so it's only like a couple hours, you know, maybe half a day at most, before all that white snow turns into kind of slush and mud. And I was thinking through like kind of how that happens in our lives, you know, like how we want to be pure in heart and we have these moments of purity and then it's kind of like mixed in with the, just the, the, just the cultural norms, you know, it's not like anybody's even fault. It's just like how it happens that we just get this white, pure, beautiful thing that's happening in our hearts. And it just gets like the complexities of the day and the problems that happen and the short words or the relationship issues, like whatever it is. And it just like grinds it out and, and it, it so quickly becomes uh, damaged again. And as Victor was talking about this purity of heart being like this fresh snow, I was thinking about how this might be a really nice practice to think about on a, on a daily basis. And I think this is one of the things about the Beatitudes that's really helpful, at least for me, as I listen to these interviews, is it's not like these, you know, pure, purity of heart is something that you achieve, that you get to, and you're just like, yes, now I've got a pure heart, I can move on. It's like these ways, it's, it's an invitation into the way of Christ, into the practice of Christ. So I, I wondered actually about what it would look like if I thought about my life as a place every morning of fresh snow, you know, the purity of God in my heart, just like covering all of the other, you know, past and the things I've done before and the wrongs that I've done with this fresh slate every day. And then again, the next day and again, the next day, but just today, this is like, I have this purity of heart to work on. Anyway, I'm sure there's all kinds of theological reasons why that's not a good image. But for me, as Victor was sharing about like, this is what a pure heart is. A, love, a heart that is full of love and compassion and a heart that has no hatred for others. Woo. And you know, this is also very interesting because if you keep reading in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus spells this out. You know, this is not just about like someone who murders. This is about like, you say in your heart, you know, this towards that other person. And that's the same thing. So it, Jesus spells it out a little bit later and Victor helps us with that as well. Is there heart or hatred for others in your heart? And uh, it's easy for us to say, oh no, I don't hate anybody, but like maybe just take a look at uh, your attitudes, your reflections, your comments, and see if some of that might live there. Especially these days with this polarization and this like uh, demonization of the political, the politics in America. And I would say increasingly all around the world, you know, we live in these sort of echo chambers of, uh, of social media where we just keep getting fed back to us things we wanna hear. And so we really have not practiced what it means to have no hatred in our hearts. And even me, like I, you know, when I hear a certain leader project or talk negatively about people, my instant reaction is just to start talking negatively about him, which, you know, or her, <laughs> which I think is, it's almost always him by the way, but it, which is the, you know, it's like trying to get rid of evil with evil, right? We just know that doesn't work and there's gotta be a different posture. So daily coming to God saying like, God, could you please clear my heart of hatred is such a beautiful practice. Um, I loved too what Victor said where he said, you know, the things that happen on the inside matter the most and matter first when it comes to purity of heart. It's an inside conversation. And you know, as Victor was talking about that, I was also thinking about this like religious impulse, right? To clean the outside, like so that we look good or even like our social media presence, like just to keep it vanilla and clear of hatred. But actually the real conversation about purity of heart is what comes from inside of us. And that was a real challenge for me too. Uh, one hope, you know, Edgar talked about hope and what are these uh, hopes and, uh, and what takes people's hopes away is what Edgar is asking. And this is what Victor says, I discover that people are forced, especially young people are forced to professions because the society thinks it's right to do so. This is interesting. And then what happens are lots of young people enter into darkness and they ruin their lives or they destroy their lives and they fall into depression. And then actually the ultimate answer is sort of this existential dread, which is suicide. This is Victor talking. 
about this forcing, these external forces that force people. Now, this is true of young people, especially in his context in India, where, where kids are forced into the workforce, forced into doing things that they don't actually have any joy or calling or feeling. But I would say even the external pressures of a culture that says, you know, it's more important to make lots of money or it's more important to be successful or it's more important to have some sort of higher... You know, and I, I remember Tom Sign years and years and years ago wrote a book called The Mustard Seed Conspiracy. And in that book, he talks about, he just goes around universities saying, this is in the 70s, telling people just drop out of school because you are literally becoming indebted to a culture, like in debt, like in debt, thousands and tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars as a young person before you even are a house owner. You know what I mean? You're in this system of debt, which will perpetuate your own slavery. Like you're stuck in this thing. So get out now. And then think through what are the sacred callings, what are the vocations, what is God calling you to do, and then go ahead and do it. But don't just, you know, buy into these cultural norms. And I remember reading that about Tom Sign all those years ago, thinking like, wow, what a countercultural conversation. Like, why are we, this is Romans 12, squeezed into the cultural mode? And what are those modes and how can we get out of them? And I loved how Victor said, you know, this is actually how dreams, like hopes are being squashed by this conformity into dominant culture. Christians should be transformative and not just in our spiritual lives, but in our real lives too. What does it look like to think transformatively about young people and the callings that God has on them and the liberating practices that we could do and participate in that would give them the space to see those things come true? I mean, what a beautiful. How do you see God even in the midst of hardship? Wow, well, Victor might know about this, but I love this again, where Victor says, I see God as my protector, my refuge, my comfort, my shield. Now, this is really interesting because the when, when I was thinking about this, before this interview, I was thinking about like, when you're pure in heart, so if you get things right, then you see God, you know, then you'll see God. Like it's like this tit for tat kind of a thing, which is my religious impulse. But Victor says the way that he sees God <laughs> helps protect his heart. You see what I mean? So he sees God. So he said, like, I already see God as my refuge, like the place I go to hide, the place I go to be safe, the place I go where I can be myself. So there's this beautiful thing. So that he says, no matter what comes my way, I know that something good is waiting there for me because God, my creator, has planned everything for me. So it's like the opposite. Because I see God as a place to run to be safe, then I can actually be pure in heart. Then all of those other things that would kind of hedge in on my own sense of purity and fullness are gone because I'm hiding in Christ. I, I love the upside down, you know, like in some ways, as I was like, oh, wow. Like if I see God as a place I run to be safe, then that changes the way that I can deal with the things in my heart. I don't have to be afraid of not measuring up or I don't have to be afraid of like not being able to see God. I already see God as a place where I can, I can be safe. And uh, anyway, I, I love uh, that, that uh, a lot. He talks about how um, his own Christian family, um, growing up in his own Christian family, uh, Victor, and non-Christians as well, and he said, most of the people in my life would not treat me with love and respect. And I, I think he probably understates his own struggle uh, in a culture that devalues people who don't function. And if, if you are tempted to think that's a problem over in India and not a problem right here where you live, uh, that is a temptation that you can resist right now because that is a problem right now. And uh, of course, he, he then he goes through his own adversity in 1993 and age seven and his own story and then told us this peace in my heart. Listen, and this is it. You don't have to do something extraordinary or something special to become special because, listen to this, you already are made in a special way with a special purpose by God. And this is what Victor said, as soon as I discovered that, <laughs> I had peace in my heart. You do not have to do something extraordinary or something special to become special because you are already made in a special way with a special purpose by God. And as soon as I discovered that, I had peace in my heart. Oh God. Please help us discover that together. Help us discover that. We do not have to do some sort of extraordinary thing or become some great person or some successful person or some you know, extra special thing to, to, to get the status of special with God because we've been created as we are 
with a specialty, with our special purpose found in Christ. And when you understand that, all the proving, all the pleasing, all the striving, all the trying, all the religious impulses can fade away and you can live with peace in your heart, with a pure heart, <laughs> even within yourself, you know. Wow, mind blowing. And then maybe just rewind this and listen to Victor sing it. Sing it on home for us one more time. What an incredible honor. I don't I hope you're feeling this. This season of this episode with World Vision. Am I ever thankful for the Lord, for these people that we're interviewing and so many more that we haven't had the chance to interview. We, this is just a little sampling of people who are living the way of Jesus in today's world and teaching us and showing us and demonstrating us this power of the way of Jesus. Um, and I am refreshed and renewed and, uh, and anyway, I'm going to keep pressing into this and I'm going to keep inviting you to do the same. And if you want to do that, we're all together. I'm inviting everyone to join me on the Matthew 25 challenge and uh, the Matthew 25 challenge. If you want to join us, this is one week of sort of interactive. Uh, you'll get a video and you'll get a challenge for the day and then you'll get a chance to discuss that together and what that might be doing on the inside of you so we can live the ways of Jesus together. If you want to join us and you're in the U.S., please join us by texting BLESSED to 44888. If you're in Canada, please text BLESSED to 98669. If you're from anywhere else in the world, please join us either by email or visit worldvision.org slash right side up, worldvision.org slash right side up. Or if it's after November and you're just discovering this podcast a little late, it's okay. There's still lots of interactive things to join us to keep pressing into the ways of Jesus and how that matters to the global community. Uh, go to worldvision.org slash right side up and uh, don't miss out. Man, am I glad to be doing this with you. Grace and peace. Thanks for listening to The Right Side Up.
Give me Jesus.